Welcome to this edition of the Everlast Power video series. This is part two in a two-part series about welding aluminum with a spool gun. In this edition, we'll demonstrate actual welding with a spool gun with aluminum. And we'll show you what to do and what not to do. Once again, we'll be using the Everlast SN200 spool gun for our demonstration. It has a 60% duty cycle at 200 amps and is capable of welding with 0.023 to 0.045 welding wire depending upon the welder. Although the spool gun is designed for Everlast iMig units, the operation is similar for most other brand spool guns. To weld aluminum with a spool gun, you will need pure argon gas or a helium argon blend. You cannot use argon CO2 blends to weld aluminum or impurities and problems will result. The use of helium in the mix can help increase penetration, but for today's welding we will be using argon because we're only going to be welding 1 8 inch material. This is typically considered the minimum thickness of aluminum that a spool gun is suitable to weld. But with experience, you may be able to weld thinner material. Let's begin by setting the flow rate. The flow rate for welding aluminum with MIG is typically higher than welding with TIG. You should set the flow rate somewhere between 20 to 30 cubic feet per hour or 10 to 15 liters per minute while the gas is flowing. Aluminum MIG requires the spray art transfer process. If you're not familiar with the spray art process, this is a fast paced, relatively clean process. It's much quieter than a short circuit MIG, but it's also much hotter. With spray art welding, the filler wire does not short circuit, but it's evenly pinched off in small droplets of molten metal and sprayed into the weld. For more information on the spray art process, there are many online resources which can provide more information. Wire diameter and filler type play a role in actual settings. Today we will be using 21 and a half volts at the maximum wire speed of the units. On the current Everlast iMig units, wire speed and voltage are adjusted on the panel. The new NTS units from Everlast do offer fingertip control of the wire speed directly on the side of the MIG gun. The smaller power iMIG units including the iMIG 200 and the iMIG 160 should only be used with aluminum filler wires of 0.030 to 0.045 diameter wires with the 4043 filler wire. For 5356 we recommend a 0.035 or greater diameter wire. Using a small wire requires a higher wire speed feed. With larger diameter wires, the wire speed feed will be lower for the same amp output. You should determine the wire speed capability of your welder and match the wire diameter accordingly. Today we will be using .030-4043. Burn back issues are common when welding aluminum with a spool gun. To prevent this, make sure that you have at least one size larger contact installed to allow the aluminum to expand without dragging. Also, make sure that the tip is recessed somewhere between 1 8 to 1 quarter inch inside the gas nozzle. With the Everlast spool gun, simply slide the nozzle forward until the correct depth has been achieved. When starting the arc, be sure you trim the ball off the tip and then trim the wire to about 1 half to 3 quarters of an inch each time. This will help prevent arc initiation issues and push off of the wire. Aluminum MIG welding requires a good work clamp connection. Make sure the work clamp is in good condition and making direct contact with a deoxidized section of the metal. Here we are using the spray arc process. The movement is rapid and requires a clear view of the arc. Notice that we are using a quick stepping motion to control the heat and provide even filling of the fillet weld. As the arc is struck, notice the slight spatter, but as the weld progresses, the noise quietens down to a hiss. This is an indicator that you are in the spray arc range. You will also notice that there is almost no spatter or sparks flying from the weld. This is yet another indicator of being in the spray arc range. Always push the gun when you are welding a little. Do not lean the gun too much in the direction of travel or molten droplets will fly out in front of the weld and create spatter. Here you can see minimal cleaning lines and excellent fusion. Again, we are working with 1 8 inch aluminum, so heat control is key.
Now we're using different camera angles to show the welding of the backside with the spray arc process. Here's the backside after we completed the weld. Again, the weld is smooth and well laid in. Now we'll demonstrate the incorrect method so that you can see the difference. We will attempt short circuit transfer with the aluminum. Notice the spatter, the arc sound, and the inconsistency. Here's the result of the short circuit weld. Notice the lumpiness and extreme convex surface of the weld. At each start point, there is little tie-in and the metal essentially lays on top of the previous pass. Even with this metal being preheated from the previous weld, there is very little fusion. Finally, here is the spray arc weld compared to the short circuit weld. This concludes today's edition of the Everlast Power video series. If you have any questions about welding aluminum with a spool gun or any Everlast products featured here today, please give us a call at the number listed above.